We are going to, once and for all, memorize the major parts of the brain. Let's start with the part that you can see outside here, and this, of course, is the cerebral cortex. All right, all this convoluted stuff on the outside of the brain. Now, you take a look at the word cerebral cortex. Now, what I'm going to do is look for words inside of these words, and there are a number of words inside cerebral cortex, but I'm going to go with the ending. Tex. Okay, now when I see the word Tex, why, of course, I think of Texas, right? Tex. So now all I have to do really is just put a little, there you go, a little Texas hat on my uh, cerebral cortex, and there you go. That will remind you that the cortex is uh, the part just under the hat, right? Part on the outside of the brain. And now you've got to connect it with what the cerebral cortex does. And the cortex is involved with a variety of things, but mostly with very complex thinking. So when you think of complex thinking, just think of E equals MC squared. So when you have to remember what the cerebral cortex is, just identify with the word tex. Think about the hat here on the outside of the brain, or hey, put it on your head, whatever. There you go. And there you go. Complex thinking. Complex cortex. A little bit of a rhyme there. Okay. The corpus callosum. Now, perhaps you remember that the corpus callosum is the, uh, the part that connects the two halves of the brain. Now, when I think about the word corpus callosum, um, I, I can see a couple of words in there. I can see core, uh, almost the word plus, and colo sum, plus and sum. Now that's kind of good because what the corpus callosum does is sort of add together the two parts of the brain. So for example, if you had a brain, now this isn't really quite right because the, the fissure there between the two hemispheres isn't quite right. The brain is actually in two parts. So what you need to do is take your brain here, make sure it's in two parts, and in order to do that, We'll just, at least to this brain, we're just going to have to cut this brain in two. Now, of course, you don't want to try this at home. Now, you got a right and a left hemisphere, right? And uh, unfortunately, in this brain, it, this is hollow, but that's because, uh, that must be because this, because this is a no-brainer. <laughs> anyway, core plus callosum. So, it is the part of the brain that goes right between the two halves and uh, adds them together. And that's your mnemonic, all right? Just kind of think of the plus and the sum part. Although there is another possibility, which is that the, la uh, the second word, callosum, sounds like call someone. Because the thing you got to remember is that what the corpus callosum does, it's this, this uh, fibers that connects these two halves and allows the two halves of the brain to communicate. So it's sort of like if you had a phone here, and uh, the corpus callosum is, uh, of course, not a wireless phone, the part that connects these two halves of the brain here. There you go. So the messages goes back and forth, back and forth. That's what the corpus callosum does. So it's either call someone or core plus callosum. Well, best I can do. Okay, number three would be the thalamus. All right, let's get rid of this. Now, what do you see in the word thalamus? I see two words, hal and amos. Hal and amos. Well, here they are here. Okay, now this is my hal and amos. Okay, here's the uh, picture of the brain and the body here. So they're here in the brain. Hal and Amos, and here's all these signals coming from the body, represented by these cars here. Now, signals are coming up from the body, and then Hal and Amos tell them where to go to be processed in the brain. So, the first one comes up here, and Hal says, hey, all right, head over to the uh, occipital lobe. And then this one goes, wait a minute, okay, head over to the parietal lobe. So, it's telling these things these sensations, where to go. And they're going around, and of course they're coming in from the body. So there's all this information coming in to the brain. 
And then Hal and Amos are telling that information. They're acting as traffic cops, and they're telling that those uh, pieces of information where to go in the brain to be processed. Now, that's the thalamus. What about the hypothalamus? Now, do you want to use Hal and Amos again? Uh, I don't think so. I don't like to mix up two, uh, two mnemonics. So, you look at the word hypothalamus, and what do you see? Well, of course, the word hypo, all right? And this is a hypo, okay? It's a toy hypo. And then there's Hal and Amos. Now, I, I don't know, you, um, I couldn't really work too much with uh, Hal and Amos, so I, I looked at the word, and one way to play with mnemonics with words is to sort of toy around with the accent and the syllables. And if you look at hy hypothalamus, you might see hypothalamus. Hypothalamus. Now, of course, you know what llamas are. Isn't it? You're having trouble forgetting, remembering. Here you go. Here's two llamas. Now, how am I going to associate a hypo with two llamas? Well, it's a bizarre enough, uh, you know, kind of imagery here, this hypo with the llamas. But what does the hypothalamus do? Okay. Now, the hypothalamus does a lot of things. Uh, among them, uh, I've heard it referred to as the thermometer of the body, that it regulates body temperature, that it lets you know about hunger and thirst and the major drives, like the sex drive. So, let's see, wait, but, hmm. uh, how about this? I'm gonna put my two llamas on this uh, plate here, and you'll see why in a second. What would I have to do? Well, what if I filled my hypo, and here's a rather large hypo. What if I, what if these llamas were all, they've just been out on a long run, and they're hot, and they're thirsty, and then what I'd have to do is go around with this hypo, and I'd have to hypo them like this here. I'm hypoing the llamas to cool them down. This is water. I'm cooling them down because they're all hot, and now they're getting cooled down, and their hypothalamus is reacting to that. And here, they're a little bit thirsty, so I'm going to give them a little bit of water there, a little bit of water. There you go. So now they're not thirsty anymore. Maybe they're not as, as much hungry and their bodies are cooled down. There you go. So the hypothalamus is the part of the brain that cools you down, that regulates body temperature, and uh, that regulates thirst and hunger and other drives as well, but we'll, we'll stick to those two. All right? Hypo the llamas. There you go, hypothalamus. Okay. Now, how about something similar? The hippocampus. Now, of course, some things are easy. Whoop, gotta get this all. Uh, you have a word like hippocampus. Well, obviously, you have to go with the hippo. Okay. Now, this is a hippo, not to be confused with a rhinoceros. This is a hippo. And uh, a hippo. Campus. Now, you could imagine a hippo stomping around on campus or on your camp, right? But remember, we have to put hippocampus or a hippo with what the hippocampus does, and the hippocampus primarily is involved in memory. Now, what else do you see with the word hippocampus? Well, it could be hippocompass. Okay, now here is a compass. All right, it's going to flip it open here. Now, what's good about that and why that works is the a compass is used when you're lost and you can't remember where home is. So, if you had a lost hippo, well, this hippo would take out his compass here and he'd say, well, where the hell the heck do I get back to the swamp, right? That's what he would do. So I'm going to imagine for hippo campus that I have a hippo, right, with a compass. That's because he's lost. He needs to remember how to get home. Okay, hippo compass.
Okay, there we go. Let's move along here. Next one, amygdala. That one was probably the toughest one. What have you got in uh, the word amygdala? Well, you do have a mig. Now, if you know what a mig is, kind of an attack plane, which might work for you if you're comfortable with that. <clears throat> what does the amygdala, the amygdala do? It primarily uh, regulates our sense of fear. Okay, so if you imagine a, 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 a mig flying towards you, that would scare you. And that would help you remember that the amygdala is about uh, regulating fear. Okay, now if the, the idea of uh, a mig doesn't really work for you, you're not into military type stuff, then the other possibility is to look at the word and think about things that rhyme with it. So what rhymes with mig? Well, this right here, a wig, okay? So, a wig. Now, that's all fine and good. How are you going to associate wig with fear? Well, you'd have to get yourself, of course, a scary wig, like this one. <laughs> okay, this one. That's right. A scary wig. Now, that's mig, wig. There's another part to the word amygdala, though, and that's the last part, dala. D-A-L-A. -A. Now, what can you do with that? Well, you know, somebody might come up to you and say, hey, uh, excuse me, have you got a dollar? Right? So, what you'd have to do is get yourself, where are my dollars? There they are. Get yourself some dollars and associate them with the wig. All right, so I'm going to put some uh, dollars on here. And I'm going to just associate them with the wig. So there we go. We got a wig with dollars. And these are actually $100, but uh, we won't pay any attention to that. All right, we got a couple of dollars over here, which makes the wig even more bizarre. This is a very strange wig here. It's got dollars all over it. Very scary. Okay, that is a wig dollar. Okay, very scary. Yes, indeed. A wig dollar. Scary stuff. Okay, next. Now, how about pons? P O N S. Now, this one's not too hard because you have uh, a word that looks like pons. Just throw a D in there, and you have the word pons. Now, what does the pons do? Well, interestingly, the pons regulates uh, relaxation. So it helps you to relax. And, and sleep as well. So all you have to do then is use your imagination and imagine that you are lying next to a pond and you're relaxing. Oh, oh, sorry about that. I was relaxing, thinking about a pond. Okay, that's what the ponds does. Next, cerebellum. All right, not too hard. Right in the middle of cerebellum, a bell. Right. So that's kind of uh, the other. Otherwise, I don't see anything else in there. The cerebellum. Okay, fine. You say, but what does a cerebellum do? Cerebellum is involved with balance and motor control. And so you have to think about that. What would I do with that? A lot of books refer to athletes uh, and athletic ability associated with the cerebellum. So what you could do is you could imagine you're an athlete that you think a lot about, someone that you're a fan of, and that person has a lot of bells, right? So picture bells maybe hanging off of that person. All right, so associate Bell with an athlete, maybe a dancer, someone, maybe someone who walks across ropes and across two buildings, right? There's a lot of balance involved there. That would help you out. Maybe you want to put a, a, a bell on someone's head, right? And they're trying to balance the bell on the head, and that's what'll help you with cerebellum. Okay, we're getting towards the end. Reticular 
formation. This is kind of a tough one. You look at reticular formation, what do you see? Well, right in the middle is the word tickle. Okay? And so, for example, we just happen to have a, a doll here that may help us memorize this. Because what does the reticular formation do? Well, it has to do with alert and arousal, right? So if you're driving a car and a deer comes up in front of you and you go like this and you're suddenly more alert, that's the reticular formation. So, tickle, all right? Well, this right here, you may recognize this. This is a famous, uh, famous uh, person in the history of psychology. This, of course, is Sigmund Freud, all right? And this sort of looks a lot like, I mean, if you go to his office, pictures of his office in Vienna, uh, you would see that his couch looks a little bit like my daughter's uh, groovy girl's bed. So here he is. So here's what you're imagining. Here's Freud. Now he's between patients. He's lying down. He's taking a nap, all right? And somebody comes along. Maybe that person has a, a feather, you know? And they tickle him. So they tickle Freud, all right? This is the... And then, <laughs> Okay, so if you were to tickle Freud, if you were to tickle Freud while he was asleep, his reticular formation would wake him up and he would say, hey, what is you going on around here? Or something like that. Okay, there you go, reticular formation. Last one, medulla. Okay, look in the word medulla. What do you see? Medal. All right, just happen to have some medals here. All right. Here's a gold medal. Of course, it's a fake gold medal. I got a bunch of these gold medals. Here you go. I'm going to take this off, put these on. A bunch of gold medals. Now, what does the medulla do? Well, the medulla regulates, among, among other things, the heart and lungs. And here are these medals, and they're right over my heart and lungs. So if you were to think of that, Maybe you think of, of uh, Michael Phelps in the recent Olympics. All the medals, right? All the medals are over the heart and lungs. Metal, medulla, metal, heart and lungs. One last way to memorize it. This right here. Maybe we'll get a good picture of that right there. All right, how about that picture? This is a jello heart. You can see it's jello like that. There, there you go, jello heart. Uh, kind of disgusting. But if, if what the other thing you can do though is associate your metals with the heart. And what I'm going to do though is I'm going to stick the metals right into the heart there. Right there, going to stick them in there. Going to stick the metal over there. I'm going to stick a metal over there. And there you go, metals in a heart. Well, that's kind of disgusting, and that's one of the keys to mnemonics, make it disgusting. Hope this helps you to memorize the parts of the brain. Remember all these things, go over them, and on the website www.thepsychfiles.com, I'll have a list of all these mnemonics, and you can download it from there. Okay, thanks a lot. Hope you found this fun and useful. See you next time on The Psych Files.